को वेलकम अबोर्ड क्रूजर्स ऑन डीबी फ्रॉम ईट स्लीप क्रूज एंड वी जस्ट रिटर्न फ्रॉम ए मीडिया ट्रिप ऑन वाइकिंग एक्सपेडिशन वाइकिंग्स न्यूएस शिप एंड वी हियर टू आंसर ऑल योर क्वेश्चंस एंड टू जॉइन मी इज अ गुड फ्रेंड हु इज आल्सो ऑन द ट्रिप फ्रॉम क्रूज एडिक्स प्लीज वेलकम जॉन शैलो ए डीबी ग्रेट टू सी यू अगेन वी आर नॉट इन न्यू यॉर्क सिटी वी जस्ट सॉ ईच अदर इन न्यू यॉर्क सिटी एंड हियर वी आर वर्चुअली विजिटिंग बट इट्स सो गुड टू सी यू अगेन It is, and one day we'll actually do one of these lives without one little technical glitch. So the the timer went twice for some reason. I I don't know what's going on, but um, no, it's good to see you too. I got my my Parker on. I'm ready to talk about Viking expeditions. Folks have questions about Viking expeditions, please leave them in the comments. We're happy to answer them. We got to spend a lot of time on that ship, right, John? Yes, I'm going back to my daily program. It's day one. It's day one. <laughs> Starting over again. I want to go back. Oh, I would love to go back. I go back in a heartbeat. So, uh again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Maybe before we get started, if uh talk a little bit about our experiences. It was a nine-night cruise in the Caribbean, and I know that's not necessarily where the ship would typically be a vessel like this, but why don't we start with like maybe one or two things that surprised you about this ship, John, and then we can see what other folks have to say or ask. You know, I'm not necessarily surprised, but I guess I what I really loved about it the most was just It was gorgeous, you know. I mean, my initial response was, "This is just a beautiful." And I don't use the word "gorgeous" very much, but that just sums it up. It's just a gorgeous ship. I thought it was a great combination of the intimacy of the river product. Uh, if you're a river cruiser with Viking, and then you had this expedition vessel with, you know, a very low uh, a number of passengers, but you have, you know, a great number of crew. So you had the intimacy of a river cruise with all the, many of the amenities of The ocean product, so I thought it was a great mixture of the two, and of course you had the the Viking product with uh, so much beautiful artwork on board, Don. And I could go on and on, and I know you've got videos out, and I've got videos to follow. Hopefully you've all followed both of our social media. Please go to Cruise Addicts. Please go to Eat Sleep Cruise. Take a look at the photos while you're listening to us. If you're watching a replay of this, you have to see the artwork. Uh, the big surprise was that hidden space that we found. Um, you remember that? The the aptly named the Hyde. Is that the what you're Hyde. talking about? Yeah, was that that the cool? Then I think that was the coolest place on board. I loved how it really felt like you were in this hidden, mysterious place. Mm -hmm. uh, there were people talking about it all all during the cruise, and we really loved it. It was very warm, and intimate, and it has this uh, speakeasy theming around, you know, down there where it was just a great place. And I think with some rough weather, or some, you know, you'd have this great vantage point, uh, right? Being in the bow, I mean, you don't get to be in the bow of a ship very often to have that. I mean, ever. So I could talk all day, but I'll throw it back to you. <laughs> What were you surprised with, uh, you know, when you got on board? Yeah, no, I'm, listen, you could talk all day. I'll just sit and listen because I, I agree with half the things you're saying. And I love, you know, very knowledgeable person, been on so many cruises, so many different cruise lines at Cruise Addicts. So I, I do think, like you said, it's an interesting combination of the river cruising aspect and the ocean. And I, I know you've been, how many river cruises have you been on? You've been on a few, right? Yeah, three total. Three, okay. So we've only, we haven't really even done one. We did like a baby one, right? Yeah, I so baby one. Like, that was, I was counting that as a third because I was just wanting some cool points there. Oh, okay. Well, that's like, listen, no, you could have 30. No one's going to So two and a baby, how's that? Two and a half, so two and a baby. So we only got a half, we got the baby one. But we've been on two full ocean cruises, so that's more our frame of reference. And I would say that for sure, it's like I think someone mentioned it as a mini, mini ocean ship, and that's kind of what it is. It has a lot of the same venues that you find on the ocean ships, but they're smaller and they're reconfigured interestingly. But the Hyde is one of the newer venues, and it is this speakeasy bar, like John said, and I think it's probably the best new venue on the ship minus the hangar which we'll talk about that when we talk about some of the features of the ship that it's really built for the polar regions but i agree with you that was beautiful and what really surprised me i think the most was they were able to kind of put everything together on a ship that only holds i think 378 passengers so it's it's definitely not like their mega ship uh, mega ship huh? ocean ships that hold a little under a thousand people right Yeah. Yeah, it was very intimate, but you really didn't feel like it was smaller. It had this big ship feel. 
on a smaller vessel. Uh, I was, I think another surprise was I knew we were supposed to get into some weather. I think you'd actually told me uh, one of the, the scientists on board said there was a cold front coming down. And I'm like, wow, we're going north. You know, anytime you go north and you're actually in the ocean, it's really going to test the hull of a ship. And that was one of the smallest uh, ships uh, I'd ever been on. And so, but I got to tell you, um, it was really smooth um, for the most part. It just, the, that new uh, hull that this, the Viking Octanus has was really, really smooth, a great ride. Um, so I can't say uh, enough good things about it. Really impressive. No, no, I agree. De definitely. And actually, so a question from Michelle on Facebook. Thank you, Michelle. Other folks who have questions about our experience, the ship or Viking in general. We've been on Viking Ocean. John's been on Viking Ocean and Viking River as well. So what was it on board in terms of comfort? So that's a great question because there are a lot of venues that are designed for you to enjoy the outdoors, but not necessarily experience them. And the hide is one in the bottom of the ship. But I would say that they have the living room and the explorer's lounge, which are both found on ocean ships with the way they're designed, right? So you can look right out the front of the ship and right next, you can be right next to the bar, nice and warm, all this glass in front, and you can still see the beautiful vistas. Uh, but what did you think of as far as kind of those finishes inside? Oh, I loved it. And I think, I think you got to start right when you get on board where you spend the most time is in your cabin and the Nordic balcony. I, you know, I've, I've seen a Nordic type balcony and what we're talking about is a balcony that's enclosed that has a, a, a window that kind of goes up. You press a button and it actually rises up and it secures and then you can put it down so you can actually get exposed to the elements. And of course we were in the Caribbean. So as we're sailing in the morning uh, into the Caribbean with these beautiful vistas, you can actually just roll that window down electronically. You push the button. And it's, it's kind of like a new car. You know, you have to get used to it, but you can actually push the button. And it would take it down to a safe spot. And if you want to lower it more, you had to push it again and kind of hold it down. But that actually was very comfortable. It allowed the outside to come in. But of course, in colder climates and whatnot, like we got to New York, it was very, very cold the morning that we sailed in. But I was able to roll it down, take some great video and whatnot. And uh, so it was perfect. So we got to kind of see it in the warm weather and use that. And that's just another example of some of the comfort. Uh, of course, the rest of the room was really, really nice. The bed was very comfortable. Uh, the bathrooms, you have the heated floors, the heated mirrors that Viking's so known for. Beautiful shower with a lot of water pressure. Uh, Viking's all about the little details. And, uh, you know, the chairman, uh, Torstein Hagen, is very detail-oriented. And we've listened to his talk on board. And uh, that's what makes the Viking product so unique and so different than many other um, products out there. It really does set itself apart with all these little details that really come from the chairman all the way down into every product. And I think that's another thing is we could go on and on with this question. What a great question from yeah. Michelle. But there's so much, you know, I mean, there's so much comfort. There's so many details. And when Viking says explore the world in comfort, they really mean it. And now they've taken it to an expedition vessel. And uh, one thing I wanted to talk about with expedition vessels, it wasn't long ago that when you heard when you heard expedition vessels, Don, what yeah. came to mind? Um, what came to mind to me was you had these old scientific research vessels, these these uh, uh, thick hulled research vessels that would explore that could actually go into the Arctic Ocean, and they were very basic. Uh, we're talking, you know, old scientific research. They weren't really purpose built for the uh, for the Arctic or Antarctic region that now you have luxurious, comfortable, uh, everything um, purpose built from top to bottom. And now these products exist. And of course, Viking Actanus being the first from Viking cruises. So I could, we could go on and on. And I, so I, I'll stop there, I think, but it was, you know, things have changed and here we are. Yeah, no, I was, we, we could, it's a great question. And there's also, I think Michelle asked about uh, the off ship experience. So we can bring that question up. But I do have to bring up, you mentioned the, the bathrooms, which are amazing. And you mentioned the water pressure, but you forgot about the, the two big elements, especially for Antarctica. They have the heated floors, right. right? The heated tile floors in the bathroom and heated towel racks. So you come in from a cold day exploring and you want to take a nice hot shower. You don't have to worry about your room's going to be nice and toasty. And yeah. those, I, I know the wife loves those, those heated floors and the heated towel rack. And they even have a drying rack closet. Right. That's separate from the main closet where you store other stuff. So if you come in with the gear, which and if you do go on an expedition cruise, they provide you with a lot of the gear you need. So you don't have to worry about overpacking. 
and they have that separate closet with your life preservers that are specially made. So they have like thermal lining in them. So they're specially made for these regions, but it's all separate and it's nice and clean and dry. So yeah, they, they think of every little touch they can when they design the ships. They, as you said, they spare no expense, right? No, every little detail, uh, you don't, you don't have to bring extra anything. They're going to have it right there for you. And it's so nice. It's just another step of, uh, you know, the Viking inclusiveness and they've taken it now to the expedition product. No, for sure. So the question here, she asked, Michelle asked about the off ship experience. So I'm not exactly sure, uh, exactly what she means, but I can say that we did get to do some of the test out some of the toys, right. That are on the ship that are specifically designed to get you closer to the action. And I'll let, I'll let you talk about, you know, maybe the more unique one or definitely the more expensive one. So they have special operation boats, right, John? And these boats are designed to kind of take you around to see the scenery. Obviously, it's a small ship, around 30,000 gross tons. So it, it can get pretty close to locales, but especially if you're in Antarctica or some of these more protected regions, even a ship that small can only go so far. So these military grade ships that hold, I think it's 12, they're, it's two by two. I want to say it's five or six rows, so not a lot of people. And we got to test run this in St. Kitts, where they took us around on like a coastal cruise. And we got to see the power and maneuverability of these vessels. And I can just imagine if you're in, you know, in, in the Arctic or Antarctica, where these ships are really you showcase these things, that you get to use these. It's totally included in the cruise fare. Another inclusion, these shore excursions are free or part of it of course you have to sign up in this limited space but they do offer this experience and i can just see it for like whale watching wildlife sightings they let you get off further away from the ship and get a little bit closer and experience so that's one of the cool elements the the special operation boats or sob i didn't come up with the acronym don't look at me and then john what what was the other thing we got to experience that's maybe even cooler than that well we didn't have to bring our own submarines because viking actually has two and they're named Paul and John. Was it Sir Paul and Sir John or just Paul and John? I'm not sure, Don. I think they were just Paul and John. We're on a first name basis. We don't have to go with the knighthood on this one. I'm pretty sure it was just Paul and John, one and one and two. Also, I think they were numbered, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they actually have two, uh, which, you know, which kind of surprised me. I, th I knew they had one, but two. And um, submarines. And they held six passengers each, including the pilot. And we were able to go on board. And what a great experience was that. I mean, we're talking bucket list. Not only do you get to go on the uh, SOB boat, but you also get to go on a, uh, a, a small submarine. And of course, we were in the, the beautiful waters of the Caribbean and we got to see some, I saw Barracuda go right by. And just the, you know, aside from the sights, I think the overall experience was, I mean, when do you get to go on a submarine? So I can only imagine what it'd be like to be in Antarctica or other regions of the world where you get to get, below the water and just being below the water and just experiencing that it was really really breathtaking so i highly recommend that if you're going on these tours make sure you register for all these things as soon as you can it's uh you can actually do all these things from the viking website uh before your cruise i think they have a time where they open up and sometimes things open as you get closer so be aware of that uh, don't delay don't get on board expect to do it the last minute because you might be uh, a little upset that you might miss out. You don't want to miss out, especially if something amazing. Um, what impressed you the most, Donna, with the submarine excursion? I mean, that was really cool, as you mentioned. So uh, I think just the just the, the thought that went into saying, like, we're going to do this, we're going to build, you know, have these built. And then it was a lot longer process. I don't know what I was thinking, but I imagine like, okay, we're going to board I, like I figured, like you, they, they would just drop it near the ship, right? Get on it and sails off. But no, it's really highly regulated. They have to get they have to get permits to dive in very specific locations. They have to be a certain distance from the shore and the, the ship. So you take these Zodiac boats out and safety first. We had to attend a. I would say I would say it was definitely a, a safety briefing, but it was not your typical like oh, I'm just gonna sit there and not pay attention. Like it was very they went very in depth. Both captains of the submarines were there, the pilots, and they drilled into you that this is, you know, this is going to be a little bit more active than you might expect, that, you know, there's sea conditions. And then they, they give you the, the worst warning of all, right, John? Yeah. We're going to weigh you. 
<laughs> but they did say in kilograms, so most of us didn't could do the we couldn't do the math in our heads, but they did they only announced it in kilograms. But, right. Right, exactly. I'm like, well, do it in stones. I don't know, but I can do the kilograms in my head. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, the way you did is they have to balance the vessel just like a, a helicopter or, or something similar. But you know, there were definitely people that we know who kind of were like, oh, this doesn't really sound right for me. And if you get claustrophobic, obviously this this is a really tight quarters, but they're brand new vessels and they're designed, right? That glass is, is it maximizes it. There's like a zoom almost on it, right? Like a magnifying glass, it's a bubble. Yeah. So you're, I think the closest we got to the seafloor was one meter, which is roughly three feet, right? Yeah, we were, it looked like we were right on it though. Yeah. Like, it, I mean, you, you would think that we were touching the bottom and it was cool. We actually got to do this together, um, it turns out. But yeah, I mean, but they're very serious about that. Make sure you take off your, uh, we took off our jewelry because mm -hmm. you could scrape the inside of it. Uh, they were very serious about people that, you know, if you're on the fence where you, you're concerned about transferring from the Zodiac to the, um, to the submarine, there was a little bit of waves, but it was actually really perfect. They have this great handle there. And of course they help you, but if you're worried or have any reservations, they were basically not trying to warn people that if you had any reservations, let's, let's not wait till we get all the way out there and you actually get in the submarine and you have a cluster, you know, you're claustrophobic, or if you're going to panic or anything like that. But most of us actually, we've been through quite a few things that I think we're all, we're a little concerned after the speech where it was a little, they really did warn everything and we're all like talking, but it wasn't as bad as we had been you know, told. It turned out to be a great experience. Um, we felt great about it. We enjoyed ourselves. Uh, but I think for the people that, if you have any reservations, it might not be for you because there are some things where it is a little bit tight quarters. So I can see someone mm -hmm. might have a concern. They might feel a little bit claustrophobic if they don't feel comfortable in a moving Zodiac you know, going through some waves and then transferring over, uh, you know, there's other, there's other really great, exciting things. The SOB boat, special operations boat was incredible. Mm -hmm. That's like, it's like, if you've been, it's the best point. The best example is if you've ever ridden a jet ski, how it can turn and stop on a dime. Uh, that's really executive. And then it sits on a air ride. If you've ever sat like an air ride seat in a, in a bus or a semi truck or something like that, where the ride is cushioned, all the all the seats in the special operations boat are on an air ride seat, so you don't feel any waves. It was the smoothest boat ride I've ever taken in my life, and one of the fastest. It was incredible. Uh, what a great experience! Of course, in the Caribbean or anywhere else this vessel goes, highly recommend that. Definitely put down for all these things if you're up for the adventure. I think they, of course, they're doing it in the Viking comfort. So, you know, take a little chance there. I don't 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 uh. Don't hesitate if you have, you know, if you're going to book this type of a cruise and you're going to have these opportunities to do these once in a lifetime bucket list adventures, just go ahead and do it. Like I said, a lot of people had reservations. I think they little, they put the fear into us a little bit, you know, about this and that, but uh, it turned out to be great. And to just touch on the, the weight, the reason why, Don, you, I, I think you were going to get to this, is that the reason why they weighed us is they're very serious about the balance and mm -hmm. the distribution of weight on the submarine. Otherwise it could go down and might not go back up. So they're very serious about that. There's a computer program. They tell you which seat you have to go in. Uh, some people got bumped a little bit to other rides um, because they needed to make sure everything was perfectly balanced and um, in, certain, in a certain weighted in a certain order. So you'd be on seat one, seat two, six, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it was very serious how they loaded and loaded. They're very, uh, the attention to de detail was incredible. And the quality of the special operations boat and the, the submarine, I think, were second to none. I can just say that. Yeah, no, great. And so we had a shout out for you. I, I had on there Kurt uh, saying it was glad to see you on our live. He was on. You were on the last live we did. Uh, we, we don't do a lot of lives. Hopefully, we'll do more. Hopefully, find folks are finding uh, value in this. So shout out to you. So this is a question uh, for YouTube from MGM Family Travels about the ports they're available on our so it does obviously depend on itinerary and sea conditions so the special operations boat they only did one day on our cruise i believe i think so yeah right it was saint kitts but they off they have they actually have two of those as well so there's two special operation boats and it was about an hour-ish experience so if you two boats multiple runs i think everyone who kind of wanted to do it not, i mean most people i should say wanted to do it could do it the submarines they tried on three separate ports of call, and 
we were in the last one on in St. Bart's, right? Oh, well, the last one that ran, I should say. So they tried it three times. The first day, they got through a few runs and then canceled it. And then in St. Bart's, we got to do it, right? We were actually the last dive of the day because sea conditions had changed since the morning. And then the next court of call, they were supposed to do a couple, and they didn't even get started, right? That was Virgin Gorda, I believe, correct? Yeah. yeah. And uh, the crazy thing about that day was we were, you might remember we're actually going out in our Zodiac and towards the submarine and the other submarine, it might have been Paul was coming back in and we're like, uh oh, you know, because, you know, there was there was a you you know that there's a window there that has the weather has to be perfect. The waves have it can't be too rough because then it gets too dangerous for everything, everybody involved. It can't be too it can't be dangerous for the submarine and it can't be dangerous to try to transfer passengers from the Zodiac to uh, the submarine. Of course, both are moving in the waves. So there's that, and everything has to be perfect. And of course you have to get permitted. Um, we found that out that they just, the Viking just can't show up and just put all these wonderful toys in the, in right. the ocean. Uh, they have to actually get permits and get approved by the local authorities. And that can take quite a bit. So it's very interesting. We learned quite a bit about this amazing uh, experience and the, uh, the submarine and the special operations boat really really incredible um i hope that we can as we see uh, don and i's videos and you know photos that it really brings these things to life and how incredible they are um and that you can experience on your viking expedition cruise so really we could keep talking yeah it's so so cool yeah well i just want to echo michelle's things like two subs yeah, I, yeah. as you mentioned the chairman doesn't mess around if he's going to spend uh, the money to build the hangar, which where these are placed. So this is a seven figure section mar internal marina in the ship that I think is one of the only out there for expedition vessels, as you mentioned earlier, John's purpose built for this. It's not some old research vessel that they bought and tried to reconfigure. It's brand new. And this like internal marina. So you actually dock in the special operation boats and then they back you out. Right. And it almost feels like an amusement park ride, like when you're riding the roller coaster and you're slowly going down and you're anticipating it. But it's uniquely designed just for Viking Octantis and Viking Polaris. So, uh, again, totally, I, I felt totally safe, but they do they do do a good job of briefing you and warning you. And if you get to do them, please do do them. And I, I believe, too, depending on the type of cabin you have, you can book at different times, right? Doesn't Viking usually say, if you're in a little bit better cabin, they give you a little bit advance notice as far as hey you can book your short service this date and if you're different cabins it's a little bit later but as soon as you can book it book it right yeah and i i know I, I remember they were saying that this is the first expedition vessel to ever have anything like this the hangar is something totally unique to viking and the reason why is no one's ever spent this kind of money on such an amazing area uh totally unique uh, totally special for Viking because they want to, when they say explore the world comfort, they're not, it's just not a tagline because they're, they're bringing these unique experiences and they're making it comfortable and accessible because uh, the, the old ways are very difficult, you know, where you just like step off the side of a, it's, it's you know, it's, it's not easily done. You're in the Arctic ocean, you're in the great lakes, you're in the Caribbean, uh, a moving vessel that, that's susceptible to the seas. So how do you make this accessible? The hangar where you can have two bays for two submarines to be launched at the same time and two special operations, but literally go out hydraulic ramps right out the back, in a, you know, through a hatch. Incredible. And, you know, every little detail was designed and created by Viking. So you could explore the world in comfort. You know, it sounds like a tagline. I saw like an infomercial here, but it's so true, isn't it? Well, it's true. Little infomercially, but we'll let that slide. So, okay. But we, so let's touch on that because we did mention some other aspects. So there is a lot of stuff just built on the ship. So if you're like, oh, uh, special operations boat, not for me, totally respectable. Because it is pretty intense. You kind of sit in this lifted chair, right? This hydraulic chair, you sit on it and you have these oh, bars. Yeah. And you, have, you have to wear your life jacket at all times. So, and you have the high tech life jacket that are designed that they actually are pressurized. So they don't inflate until something happens. And hopefully that doesn't happen. But there's a lot of stuff right on the ship, right? That you don't even need to leave the ship and still get to enjoy a lot of things around there. So on the back of the ship, they have one of the coolest areas, I think, is their theater, the Aula, right? That is designed 
to have 270 degrees of glass in the back. So it doubles as a theater with all the stuff you'd expect Viking to have. Documentaries, they have lectures, port talks. But then it, op it can open up, so they have the screen, and they can for it's a 4K screen, and they can show stuff. But then it opens up, and you just look out the very back of the ship. So you can still see a lot of great stuff just sitting right there in the comfort of the aula with a coffee or water or maybe a beer. And you can just still experience everything, right? So you don't even have to take take advantage of some of those other things if you didn't want to. Yeah, and they had the, the welcome, the captain welcomes aboard the first night, I believe it was. And we got to meet the uh, entertainment director. Oh, man, entertainment manager, but same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, he he uh, did some beautiful singing. He had a, the most amazing voice, um, really, really incredible. And so he also had a performance, and they also were having another entertainment manager coming on board, and he did a, a show as well. So beautiful vocal performances by both the entertainment managers. And then the last night, uh, or night before the last night, they actually had a goodbye toast. And so as you walked in to the venue, they would actually give you champagne. So everybody um, had that available. Just those little touches where you get to enjoy these spaces, be it a documentary or in this case, a vocal performance or a um, where they're talking about the briefing with the submarines and, uh, you know, either welcome aboard or the goodbye toast by the captain. Really, really great. Yeah. And that's what so that's one interesting thing we didn't expect. Obviously, the Alo we expected, but having been on Viking Ocean and knowing that, listen, Vikings all about the destination, right? They're not going to try to have all these crazy bells and whistles, or I think the chairman calls them like distractions. But there was a couple shows during nine nights, and then they even did a game show. I don't know if you, I don't know if you went to the lot the Liars Club. They did one night with the entertainment manager and some of the uh, Expedition Centrals, one of the expedition staff and the singers. So. There was a little more cruise than you usually get with Viking, I thought, on this trip. Would you agree? Yeah, it was really, really cool. I, I love that. I had so much available. And um, yeah. the, the the excursions were very uh, – one thing about – and I think Michelle was kind of asking about the off-ship off, off -ship experiences. I don't know if you want to talk about excursions, other excursions. But they definitely had – because this was an expedition vessel, the excursions had more hikes available. They had really challenge, more challenging um, – uh, experiences, uh, even in the Caribbean. And so I know a lot of the guests enjoyed that. Some were a little surprised uh, at different times, but I think overall it was a, definitely a, uh, you know, some challenging, definitely some expeditionary type of experiences, even in the Caribbean. But of course, once you came back on board and really throughout the whole process, you were, had great comfort uh, and you had great opportunities. Uh, I know a lot of times we were whooped after the days, you know, with the heat uh, of the Caribbean and the great food and just keeping busy that before you know it, it was the next day was coming. And so it was, uh, you know, just like any cruisers, usually more things do than you'd actually can do. So it was nice to, to be able to try different things uh, throughout the voyage and uh, just experience every little thing when you were ready for it, you know, depending on your daily schedule. No, I, that, that is true. We, we, we go to bed early typically, but it did feel like 930 would come around. Oh, yeah. And everyone was like, oh, you want to get a drink and maybe you get a drink, but you're just kind of like, that was a long day. And we were, like you said, in the Caribbean. I can imagine if you're in the Arctic or Antarctica or the Great Lakes, the, the ship's going to the Great Lakes right now. And a really cool itinerary that you get to go to all five Great Lakes. I think they're from like Toronto to Duluth, I want to say. Uh, you, I don't remember, but it's, it's a 14, 15 day itinerary. So roughly two weeks. And you get to go to all five Great Lakes in one trip. I don't know anyone else who offers such an experience like that. But you're going to be exhausted by, like I said, nine o'clock. So yeah, this it was. Is... It was yeah. I think some people we talked to on tours kind of like eh, this is not what we thought when we you know we've cruised with Viking before. So yeah, you're not going to be able to get on this. I mean, I guess you could, but this this is an expedition vessel, and I think I think you know it, it kind of caught up with all of us. I think you know. Uh, you get this opportunity and you know it's an expedition vessel. Then you get on board. You're like, wow, this isn't a uh, – um, you're you're an active participant in your in the excursions. And you're going to get out there. And you're going to be able to really get up close with nature wherever you are. Um, it's not easy to be in a Zodiac and transfer to a, 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 a submarine. It's not easy to do a lot of things uh, 
that where you're actually doing hikes and whatnot and you're really getting out there um and that's what we did and i thought it was just a great great experience i'll never forget it um and i it really opened my eyes to this type of travel expeditionary travel and really just like my first biking cruise where i love my like for it was a river cruise where mm -hmm. I, where i actually came back and i told people about it, i'm like you know what i love the fact and i really changed the way i travel uh, especially with river cruising you know, so many times in the Caribbean, like a normal Caribbean cruise, a lot of stuff, you're in a van, you're kind of shuttled around and stuff like that. Viking doesn't really do that. Um, mm -hmm. If you're going from point A to point B, it's usually to get you somewhere where you're going to get out of that uh, vehicle, be it a bus or a van, and you're going to get to the city center, and your feet are going to hit that ground, and you're going to do some walking, and you're going to be some talking, and you're going to be in the city center, looking at things, touching things, eating food and really experiencing things. And the ex this was this expedition vessel was just the, the next step, the, another type of experience um, that Viking offers. And I really, really loved it. And I, I'm really passionate about that type of travel. And it really has changed the way I travel from now on, no matter what um, cruise line I might be on. Obviously, I'm very, I enjoy all types of cruise line, but Viking does it great. But it, I, I can't sit in the van and, you know, and look out the window, you know, of uh, looking out, you know, I want to get out of the van. I want to walk around. I want to experience things, you know. So, uh, and of course, that's what this was, uh, where we did some beautiful hiking. I went to waterfalls. Uh, we went to the baths, in Virgin Gorda for the first time. I mean, so many great things. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, I could, I could keep talking, but wow, it was so great. Even the, even the tour of New York City. I mean, I've got a lot of response to that from my social media. You know, one of the best tour guides took us around. And uh, before my, my afternoon flight, really, really good. Um, and yeah, once you're exposed to great cruising and great tours and great experiences, it's hard to go back. It really is. So just like anything in life, once you get the best, it's hard to, it's hard to go backwards. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And I think you touched on it too, is that a lot of these tours, I think we, we paid for one and ended up canceling it anyway. Most of the tours are included with the cruise fare with Viking. And then, what they do obviously, obviously offer some additional tours that are maybe a little bit that, that are additional money, but maybe a, a little bit more of an elevated experience. But you don't need to book those. The, the Virgin Gorda one, actually, we were on that tour. That was included. Uh, we did one in St. Lucia that basically took you around to see the highlights, the drive-in volcano, and you got the, you got the hike to the Sea of the Pitons. And, that, and then the estate, that was all included. And, and it wasn't, yeah, you're... On a, you are in a small vehicle to get bust around to get to places, but you're not stuck all day just looking out a window and just saying like, oh, here's this, here's that, right? So Viking really makes sure that the destination's the focus of all their of all their their tours and of their trips, right? They're they're more about the destination than the ship. That's why all the ships are alike. The, the, so Atlantis is going to have a sister ship, Polaris. And as far as we know, it's a carbon copy, just like a lot of their ocean ships are almost exactly the same minus one or two little differences like some have a planetarium right some don't but the, the newer ships one the older ones don't but all the dining is going to be the same the layout's the same the, roughly the same type of entertainment things right they just they want they don't want you to be distracted yeah and um i'll talk about a unique tour i actually did a special tour in san juan uh, puerto rico when we stopped there uh because i've been there several times and i wanted to try something really unique so they had an agra uh tour where you got to go to a farm and it got to experience. And the cool thing about it is this farm actually had produced many different farms. So it was kind of like a collective where brought many types of uh, products from all around the island. And they made specialty products for the restaurants. So they had chives that tasted like garlic and onion mm. with like a flower. And we were able to taste all these different products uh, with our own hands and smell it and taste it. And we went throughout the entire farm. We got to meet goats, milk goats, if you were up for that, to try that. It was really cool. They made cheeses there. Um, we were they had, we were able to try all the different products. They had fresh salsa, marmalade, uh, the cheeses. Really, really incredible. All right there. They had hydroponics. And then the, it, the, high, the, the ending of it, the, kind of like the highlight, was a traditional Puerto Rican meal made with many of the products that we had actually seen from the farm. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, but the, the really neat, neat product about it was, or part of it was, we got to taste all these different products right there, just picked right off the vine or what have you, or flower. And 
you can actually taste it and see how you could use it at home or how they were using it in restaurants for their pestos or many specialty dishes. Incredible. And it was a small group, only like 12 people. It was an optional tour. Incredible. Really, really think it was educational. It was informative. And we got to meet like a beautiful family from Puerto Rico. Um, so you have this human experience that I'll never forget. So just another thing, another example of another day where you got out and did something that you didn't know you didn't, wouldn't expect to do and you would never do on another tour normally with maybe a different cruise line. No, I mean, that, and that's what Viking, I think, specializes in, right? Offering that type of experience that is going to be more intimate, more focused and more immersive than the yeah. other cruise lines. But <clears throat> we could sell all the other cruise lines and I think some of the cruise lines, they're getting the hint that that's what, that's what people want. That's what travelers want. Even when you're in a large ship that has thousands of people, you want to get some experience of the destinations you're visiting. And obviously some do it better or just they they have more experience doing it. So, but that amazing excursion reminded me of something we haven't talked about yet. And that's dining. Oh and yeah. That, I mean, that's why they had to wait. They had to wait me in because I eat too much on the cruise. It's not, it wasn't the balancings out. That was just polite because they took a look at me and they're like, I don't know about that. But uh, <laughs> so let's talk about the dining because the dining surprised me in some ways that in a good way, in some ways where I was like, oh, I didn't expect that. So let me start with the, huh, I didn't expect that with the main dining room. How's that go? Huh? How did that go again? Huh? I'm yeah. not sure. Um, <laughs> that's, well, we don't need to do my face. Yeah. Uh, that's, we, that, that's an inside yeah, joke, yeah. folks. But uh, yeah. if you, if you join us on enough lives, you'll, you'll get in on yeah. it. But, so the restaurant is on deck one. It's like the main dining room, only open for dinner and really small. Right? Small. I was not he's really. I'm from the New England area. Kind of small. Kind of limited menu. Would you disagree? Yeah. I mean, I, I know that you you kind of touched on it, you know, when we when you talked. Mm -hmm. And I think the basic idea, at least we kind of um, came to our own conclusion, is that the restaurant is smaller than the uh, – the world showcase, right? The world market, world marketplace. That's right. World, world marketplace, which is the buffet area, but also has the grill. So just to let you know, the grill, you can have a steak. I mean, they'll grill. They literally grill you all types of different types of meats um, and cook cook a, a really wonderful meal for you right there. So you have this kind of like walk up uh, grill experience with amazing amazing choices, aged. Uh, Age steaks, egg ribeye, brisket, um, lunchtime burgers, hot dogs, all types of things. So that's part of the world marketplace. But then the restaurant is the restaurant, as we all know, is Viking Cruisers uh, from the Ocean Product. And as Don was saying, it's a little smaller than the world marketplace. And so and it's also reserve reservation only. So before you get on your cruise, you might be wondering, why do I have to make reservations? Because on the ocean product, a lot of times you just walk right up. And so what we did learn, and if you want to finish the thought here, Don, because I know you touched on it, but it, so it's a little smaller and you have to, if you want to eat at the restaurant uh, for every night, if that's what you choose to do, like if you like to always be a sit down uh, dinner in the restaurant, then you would need to make sure you have reservations at that or one of the special restaurants like Manfredi's. Uh, for your cruise. And um, we found out that that's a little harder than you think, right? Well, I found out the hard way when we <laughs> went to try to make reservations. The second night, we did, first night was crazy. We, we all, a lot of us flew in day of down. It, it originated in Barbados, folks didn't know. One way to New York City, really cool kind of trip. So everyone's exhausted day one. And yep. then day two, the boss, Heidi, is like, oh, well, Let's, let's go to the dining room, go see if you need reservations. Went down there and they're like, oh, you definitely, just no walk-ups, you definitely need reservations. And oh, by the way, you can't eat there tonight. Oh, and by the way, I don't think there's any more reservations left for the entire cruise. We're going to have to talk to a manager. But that was smoothed out. We were able to eat there. We I think we ended up making a total of four reservations over nine nights because, as John mentioned, there's also the alternative restaurant. I'll talk about that in a minute. And there is a pretty good buffet. But for those who follow us, you know, we almost never eat at the buffet, especially for dinner. Like we almost never eat there for dinner. Breakfast, maybe lunch a couple times. So 
the fact that we ate there at least I think three or four times for dinner is definitely I'm only probably mostly like three times for dinner, a little atypical for us. But yes, you if you want that kind of more traditional sit down three course meal in the main dining room, then make your reservations pre cruise or day one and strap in because the times we went there, it was definitely a 90 minute plus kind of very formal sort of great service, very you know, personable, but definitely lo a long experience, right? Yeah, I think I actually went one time with you. Oh, you uh, only went the one time, the only, only time you ever made to the restaurant was with us? Yeah, and then I went to Manfredi's twice, and the other nights were um, in the World Marketplace. And um, the grill, the first night I ate the grill, yeah. really, really good. Their aged steaks, I mean, incredible. It looks like you're at this beautiful steak house with the, all the meat on display. Uh, lobster tails with it. I mean, you can pick and choose. I mean, grilled vegetables, uh, you know, uh, baked potato, incredible. And then, of course, the, the the buffet itself is really unique. So, and to touch on the World Marketplace, I kind of want to go back a little bit too. One of the benefits of the World Marketplace, it's almost like a food hall feel. Mm -hmm. They have this beautiful bakery where they have breads and, um, I want to make sure I say it right, um, focaccia bread. They, they change that. So you have focaccia bread, all these different fresh breads, pizza, and then uh, you have the dessert area um, and many different areas. You have sushi uh, and also seafood. We're talking uh, king crab legs, um, many different types of things. So I could go on about that. But they so you have all these different areas, including the grill, including other areas uh, of the marketplace. And then you have the restaurant as well. So a lot of people are go there and eat uh, at the marketplace because it's convenient. And we're thinking that that's probably why it's such a big space is on an expedition vessel, a lot of passengers are going to be exhausted. Yeah. They don't want to get dressed up because there is a dress code that's pretty strict for the restaurant. Um, so people can be a little more informal and more relaxed after a busy day of expedition travel, um, like I said, which does test you a little bit more than, uh, you know, a more casual experience. So we're thinking that's why they did it. But if, if you're the type of person that wants to sit in the main dining room, have a traditional experience, just make sure you make your reservations in advance and know that uh, they will go. And uh, But as the, we did learn, as as the cruise went on, there was more cancellation. And so there's more opportunities to go to go there. Um, all, all, is not, all is not lost, right? So, you know, night two, it's doom and gloom. And yeah, by middle way through the cruise, you talk to some people, if you go a little bit later, you're a little bit luckier too. So you can do like eight o'clock. That's when we eat, right? Roughly like eight o'clock or so. You can go there a little bit later. Uh, also, our friend who, John, who's also uh, from In the Loop Travel, mentioned the World Cap Guy. He was on the ship. He's got some great video and stuff out there too, some articles uh, regarding Viking Actantis and Viking Expeditions. So check out In the Loop Travel there too. And as John Shell from Cruise, we get too many Johns up. Uh, as John mentioned, the World Cat, we, we were informed the World Cafe can basically hold almost everyone on the ship at once if it needs to. So the ship holds like 370. I want to say they told us the capacity is like 360. So they are anticipating that most people are going to come back on board and they're not going to want to change up and do get all dolled up to go to the sit down restaurants. So that's why it's designed that way. But in the Caribbean, even though you have your hiking and stuff, there were some days you want to go that. And I think even in Antarctica, right? There's probably some nights like, oh, I want to get wine and dine. But great thing about Viking is beer and wine included at meals, even on the expedition ships. And that includes a buffet. So there's wait staff going to get you, you know, the house wines that are included with the meals, or I like my IPAs and IPA on board. They'll get you a drink or two. So you still can get all of that and great service. Very timely. Come up to you in the buffet for dinner or lunch or whatever, asking you, do you need anything? Do you want anything? And they even customize stuff. So there was no grilled chicken to be had. And we talked to one of the waiters and he actually talked to the chef and by, I think it was night three or four, they had grilled chicken in the restaurant, uh, in the World Cafe, the buffet. So Heidi could get some grilled chicken for like on a salad or just on the side instead of the, the grill had a fried chicken sandwich, which you don't, you don't eat so much fried chicken sandwiches in one week. Uh, but I think that that's, so those are the surprising things. The buffet is better than you would expect, but it's also kind of where they're pushing you. But that's not to say those are the only casual restaurants. There were a couple other ones. And one of them, I get your take on this, John, Mamsons, the Scandinavian deli. Did you check that at all during our, I know you've eaten there before, but did you try out this version on Viking Octantis? 
Yeah, I just have to correct myself. I was saying World Marketplace, but it's actually World Cafe. John said, I'm like, yeah, I'm saying this wrong, aren't I? Wow. But uh, it felt like a marketplace because it had this food hall type environment. So I think that's why my brain was trying to call it, rename it. But really, really great. And yeah, I went to Mamson's. I had the pea soup, which Viking's known for its ocean ships. I finally had that really, really good. Um, and of course, they have the many different uh, Norwegian sandwiches there. Really good. Because sometimes what happens is, and just to kind of give you some background and see what you think about this, Don, is the ex ex the expedition type excursions would leave in the morning. So a lot of times you'd be off ship, like scheduling wise, kind of like the river product where a lot of things start in the morning. About not eight or nine o'clock, a lot of people were getting already starting their morning excursions uh, pretty much everywhere. And so you would come back, say, at like like 12, 31 o'clock and you may or may not be hungry. Sometimes you're just tired because the heat and you've been busy, you've been hiking, you've been boating, you've been all these doing these wonderful experiences. You're not this, and maybe you had like, I, a lot of times I had, I actually got room service quite a bit delivered. Um, so I got that a lot. So I start my day with coffee and everything right in my, my Nordic balcony. And then I would get, leave the cabin and get, you know, and go and start and I'd be gone. And I really wasn't hungry enough for a, a substantial lunch, but mm -hmm. around two o'clock, around two o'clock, I'm like, you know, it's time for something. So I'd go out there and the Mamsons would be there to answer your question and just loved it. It was just nice for a nice uh, Norwegian type sandwich, uh, of course, from Kareen Hagen's uh, grandmother's recipes. Uh, really, really good. And it was, loved it. And then it was just enough to tide me over for, you know, more substantial dinner. How about you? Yeah, no. So, uh, well, we didn't get as much room service as you apparently, which 24 hour room service, right? And they have the breakfast menu for breakfast hours and then yeah, and they have had an all day menu to deliver. They had a surprise uh, dish I didn't know about. I'm not going to tell you. Can I tell you it? Yeah, go ahead. I don't know. The Southern story. fried chicken. Oh, okay. Really good Southern fried chicken on board with uh, corn on the cob. Really, really good uh, for lunch. Didn't expect to see that, but it was really excellent. I got that one day that I stayed in for lunch. You're making me hungry. We, we did breakfast once because you can't not get room service breakfast on a cruise. Right? You have to have that one day where you're like, Deliver it to me. And with the Nordic balcony, like I said, you can open it. And it's like, if anyone's been on the Edge class of ships, Celebrity Edge class, there's their Infinity Veranda. It's kind of essentially what the Nordic balcony is, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's essentially it's essentially the same thing. So it, it, it opens up. It's like a bigger window, but they have nice dedicated seating there on the Viking ship. And then we got room service that one morning. And it was, you know, it was perfect. Uh, just what we needed for that day. But yeah, John, you're right. So, some... Sometimes the only thing open really is the buffet, depending on your schedule. So we did get to Mamson's. We got to Mamson's. Uh, oh, the one, one, well, a couple of times where we didn't have treasures. So we had three CDs at the end. And then I think the day we did, we had a later day, or we were supposed to get off the ship and didn't. We did the waffles. You can't go wrong with the waffles at Mamson's. And then the open face sandwiches and the, the cakes and desserts there. They, they call them snacks, but I don't. <laughs> I don't know how much of a snack those slices of those, like, what is this called? Like, surprise cake is one of them. That's, like, that, that's not a snack. Success cake is like, success. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's, it is. It's a success if you can eat it and then, like, move on with the rest of your yeah. day because it's a between, little bit, a little bit dense. Between Manfredi's and the success cake, that is two reasons right there to just book any Viking Ocean or expedition ship right there. Just incredible. I'm not going to disagree. So, so yeah, so Mamson's is a great uh, casual option. As you mentioned, the times were a, li a little bit off. It opened, I think like eight or eight 30 to 10 30, then closed and open up again for lunch, but then closed and open up again for snacks. And so you, you know, had to time it right. And then what, what, what to, to help you out is Mamson's is open when the buffet is not. Like to is help. It though, but the buffet's open at eight 30 in the morning. Well, it was kind of like a filler between lunch and dinner. Mamson's would be open to where you could actually have a nice meal there, you know, nice, uh, something, you know, based on what you wanted, but that's what I kind of noticed. It was almost like a filler to fill any gaps that might be there as far as another option when, when, uh, the full buffet wasn't open. And they also say that the, well, there's, enough, there's, pl there's plenty of food everywhere. Um, yeah. There's the, but there, they also have the, uh, um, bakery. They've got cookies and coffees are out and cakes and different things like that. So there's, it's a, uh, that's a 24 hour room service as well. Yeah. No. So, I mean, so there's plenty to eat on the ship. So if you're thinking, 
Well, we already, we already know this, right? Vikings making these ships specifically for these regions, and they're not sparing expense when it comes to the onboard vehicles and activities. So they're not they're not jipping you on the food either. And let's, so let's talk about Man Friday. So there's the restaurant every night. It's open for dinner. Your kind of typical three course dinner. Reservations required. And then they ha- they don't call them specialty restaurants because it's included. So I like the term alternative that they use, right? right? So they have one alternative restaurant, Man Freddy's, which is an Italian restaurant. Now you, we both ate there twice, two different times. We ate together at dinner one night too. But uh, so I know you eat the second time. Would you have the first time you went to Man Freddy's? I had the ribeye, of course. The uh, oh, for- by Stecca. By Stecca. <laughs> I can't say it properly, but the that's called the by Stecca. But it's their it's Man Freddy's um, um, their specialty. And you think, well, what a why would you get a ribeye steak at an Italian restaurant when they have fresh pasta? They have all these wonderful uh, dishes there. It's the it's the everybody loves the mm-hmm. ribeye steak. Uh, it's aged. It's rubbed with spices. Uh, really, really incredible. Uh, must do. That's why you got to do it two nights. Right. It's got to do because everything's very filling. You got to get the in a pasta. You got to get the. Um, uh, we don't have to. You just get it. What? You said you have to get it. I'm like, we, we obviously do, but you don't, it's not like you're holding a gun to your head. Like, you, you have, have to get, get it. it. I'm telling you. Like, you walk in, like, sir, today you're going to have the antipasti, but I don't, no, you're having you it. You have to get it. Yeah. They're going to go Guido on you, John. They're going to go Guido on you. You have to get it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you got to do it. Uh, yeah, so the second night you had, you had the pasta with us, right? It, 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 we all tried the, we all tried a bunch of things that second night, right? Yeah. The pasta was so good. And everything is so good there. I mean, yeah. but the, the, the fresh pastas they're known for, it's all fresh pasta, which I love. And mm-hmm. um, they've got different sauces based on what you're, uh, what you'd like, you know, uh, different flavors, but really, really, really good. And so definitely check it out. I mean, well, we're, we're getting we're getting people hungry here. Barb is uh, nice. getting hungry with all this, this, all this talk happen. here of food. Two nights, not one night. Don't, we both did. You we both did two nights on it, and you're saying, no, yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm just showing you. Me, no, no, believe me, I I eat the steak the first night too. <laughs> yeah, so, it was really the polenta appetizer, right? Mm-hmm. With the truffle, we had the, I had the pasta. We also had the we both got the um, veal. You got the one wheel type, um, and I got the other one. I, I know I'm not going to say it right, so I'm not even going to try to say it. But uh, yeah, uh, well, I got the Malinese. I think you got the scallopini, didn't you? Yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I don't know why it was hard to say, but did a great job. <laughs> uh, I, probably, I probably didn't say it right. Heidi's going to come back to me with her list of things I didn't do right tonight. But yeah, the food you, the food there is so good. You yeah. you, you want to you know you can't take it home. There's no doggy bag really. So, you know, you want to eat it all. And then you have to get up and walk out, which is really difficult because it was so good. So that's the hardest part is getting up from the chair and walking to the to the out. So, but luckily the ship is still not too small, but, you know, you can walk it off. And if maybe Actually, you might have a hike the next day too, like I did, two and a half mile hike. I didn't know I was a hiker, but I'm trying to be like John Roberts from In Loop Travel. And I told him that I want a little patch for my Viking jacket, like hiker, you know, they need to have that. So. No, yeah, I mean, you and me both. I mean, uh, I, like to, you, I, I, I did. I was like, day number two on the Viking. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we're not. Heidi and I are hikers, like like some of our friends here, join us. Thanks for joining the live and talking. We're talking. Um, man, we're talking about food. Mamsons. We're talking about Man Freddy's World Cafe. Uh, yeah, we're. I, I think you were carb loading. Probably that's what you're doing there, right? Preparing for the hike. Right. Right. Interesting question. Do you do the goat? This is so, Colleen. Uh, the goat cheese. I'm, we're not a fan of the cheese and the waffles. How about you, John? I did the goat cheese on a, a, my first Viking ocean ship. I don't like the brown goat cheese. No, it, it looked like peanut butter, but I didn't. I'm not a fan of that. Oh, probably but too I, healthy. That's why we don't like it. I did the pea soup though, and I did the success cake twice. I just go right. I just pass the waffles and go right. They look pretty, and I go right to the success cake. Well, that's success right there. I just go straight yeah. to the cake. <laughs> Uh, we got so for, again. Thanks for joining us. Uh, having, as you can tell, John and I love love talking about cruising, love cruising together, and we, we can talk all night. But definitely want to see if you have other questions, either about we talked a lot, basically everything about the ship we could, but we can still talk more. Or we've mentioned some of the Viking Ocean because the ship does resemble more of a Viking Ocean. That's the one thing I was surprised at. You mentioned this a minute ago. 
that it's kind of a bigger ship. We, Heidi and I were on a ship that we thought would be more comparable in Tahiti that was only like 15, like about half the size of the ship. And it felt much smaller, right? So we were on a ship that was like 13, 14,000 gross tons. This is 30. So it's a pretty long ship. And there's a lot of things on there, but it's still, it's still very, the layout's easy to figure out, right? And you can get to everything relatively quickly. Yeah, really, really nice. I think it was perfect size. Really, really loved it. Um, for, you know, in this case, it's, it's purpose built for expedition, but just the overall ex cruise experience on that size of vessel was so nice. Really, really loved it. It's I nice actually think, I, we, we love folks, yeah, I mean, folks knows us, we, we sail on mega ships, so we've been on all, you know, Oasis class and all our ships for, for Royal and Norwegian and Carnival and Princess, but I think this this is the perfect, I couldn't go any smaller than this ship. Like, so we've been on a couple other smaller ones, and I think that this would be this is the perfect size for the itineraries it's doing so uh, you, you you have enough flexibility that's not like the same thing every day you can change it up right yeah i loved i loved how this ship brought us to the ports and we really we, we were docked in bays and places that um other other mega ships can't go to i liked how comfortable it was of course the viking service was incredible um just being able to not i just been on a, one of the largest ships in the world the week before and, um, you know, just being able to the ease of being able to get things and access things and not have to rush and walk, you know, 30 minutes to get to your next desk to, to a part of the ship was so nice. Uh, just really comfortable. It was just a great, great experience, you know, and it's, you know, the intimacy, uh, there's no lines for anything, really. I mean, it's just so comfortable. Just a great experience. Highly recommend it. Uh, would love to go to Antarctica, or the Arctic, and really uh, see that purpose built vessel. Mm -hmm. that environment it was nice to see it in used in the caribbean it's i'm curious to see the pictures from the viking group um in other photos people using it in the great lakes would love to see that i know that's a real up-and-coming area but yeah just really can't say enough good things how comfortable it was the crew on board i don't know if we've touched on this yet but yeah. the, the crew on board absolutely incredible and i think john and colleen would agree um they were with us and so nice to see you guys here um i know you're getting ready for sea trade just really really exciting um to to have such a great crew um totally great experience um can't say i mean just from top to bottom everybody on board uh were incredible no i mean i i don't disagree with you i think that those are small touches they they learn they learn your preferences they learn who you are really fast on the ship right and yeah. they go above and beyond to try to accommodate you. It's the first, the answer is never no. It might be, well, I'm not sure. Let me find out. But it, it may go find out. It's not like, oh, I'll find out for you. And then two days later, you bump into the person. You're like, did you ever check in for that? Maybe like, who are you again? Uh, the, the Viking, I think, excels with their service and their attention to detail. And I mean, talk about, I, I think we told you a story, but real quick, folks, my wife likes a very specific type of coffee, her iced caramel lattes. And the coffee shop that makes them wasn't open until a bit later. The bar that makes them, so you can still get lattes and make them in the buffet. In the buffet, but they didn't have the caramel syrup. So I asked them, like, can you just put a, like a cup of caramel syrup, like in, in a cup? I'll have in my room. We get every, our room had a mini fridge. The next day, they delivered a full bottle of caramel syrup to our room, so she could have it for her coffee. Oh, which, wow. yeah, I mean, who else does that, right? I, I was just asking, like, can you just fill like a disposable cup? That's all we probably would have needed for the week. But the room service literally the next day delivered a full bottle of caramel syrup, which I almost feel bad because we used it, of course, as much as we could. But th I mean, that, that's kind of the level of attention detail you even get in the expedition, um, the expedition product. So it's I, I can't imagine trying to go uh, to regions like this and not have that level of service. Right. If you're going to go all the way there, you want to get back to the ship and know that this is how they're going to take care of you and that they're going to get to know your name. They'll know your favorite drink. And you know, generally seem interested in talking to you again to know it is. It's kind of has a family atmosphere, right? Yeah, and you know, like you said, if you're gonna, I mean, it wasn't long ago where you didn't have these options. You didn't have, yeah. you know, uh, it's expedition cruising is really the big thing this year. Uh, everybody's talking about it in the cruising industry, um, and now you have Viking with their first vessel. And you can go to these places and have these amazing, challenging experiences um, in such a com comfortable environment. And it, it just did, we just have to can't say it enough that this did not exist uh, for Viking and many other uh, companies. 
you know, and I know John has a question here. Yeah, I don't know. That, so I want to say it's cold and hot, isn't it? But these are three temperatures, as John points out. It's uh, cold, tempered, so medium, and then hot. But I don't know. Do you know, John? The, the, the other John, do you know the, the proper order of going through these pools? So I know I saw John's picture, and I, you know, I thought those were my abs, by the way. When I saw John's picture, I was like, that looks like me. Then I realized, well, that guy's a little taller. It has to be John. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know those were plunge pools back there. I know he's, I know I didn't, I didn't realize they were different temperatures. Oh I, yeah. So if you look, they have, they have names. So I'm pretty sure if you're looking at, looking at them. So you're at the back of the ship looking forward. I'm pretty sure it goes cold, medium, hot. Oh, I didn't know so that. From, from your, my right to left. So from starboard to port. I don't know. I mean, the answer is I can I make it up. covering my bike and missed that chapter, I guess, you know? Well, not many people, I mean, what we heard was the cold started off cold in the morning, but by the okay. day, especially in the Caribbean, right? It's just, it's going to naturally warm up a little bit, but we'll, we're going to get on that for our book report uh, in the loop. And I would say it's cold to hot. Uh, that's what I'd go with. I don't know. I, I saw John in there. I'm, let's see. I saw him in there. John has to know. So, um, <laughs> Kurt's thanking us again. Kurt, we actually get the sale of Kurt and his wife on Celebrity Edge, the first cruise back last year. So we got to meet them. They're a great couple. Uh, the travel agents do a lot of traveling. He's thanking us for the conversation. He was on, I, he was on Apex and he's on Lure. He's going all over the place. Appreciate um, it. Yeah, so thanks for, thanks for joining us. And then uh, Colleen's echoing John's statements, and I agree, too, about the amazing service on Viking. Uh it, yeah, there's not enough good things you can say about they treat you. So I think I'm trying to think, did we miss anything? There's six decks. There's we've talked about well, oh. Let, oh, the one part we did talk about the ala, but behind the ala, we didn't touch on this real quick. The Finse Terrace there, yes. that little back area. It's this really cool viewing area back there that has fire pits. I thought that was a little underutilized, right? In the Caribbean, I think that's more akin to like when you're sailing somewhere a little bit more scenic. What do you think? I thought, I mean, I thought it was great. I know some people wish there was like a bar back there. If we were going to be critical at all. I, some people wanted to spend more time back there. And um, I heard some people say they wish there was like some bar service. And uh, that might have been us. <laughs> Always looking for a bar. I thought I heard someone say there should be a bar back there. I'm like, sure, it's not. Maybe other people. Maybe other people. <laughs> I just heard that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just the messenger. But, uh, you know, but I thought it was a beautiful space. It's nice. You know, it's, it's really, really beautiful, and I know, uh, I mean, it, just to be so close to the ship's wake in the back there was just really, really cool, and it was just beautiful. Yeah, it had, it takes great photos, right? So I'm sure John is on his social uh, cruise addicts, if, if photos from there. Uh, we may have captured him taking a photo from there uh, that we haven't posted yet. We're holding that onto that one uh, for uh, for a rainy day, but I, I felt like it. they had these fire pits, which are they kind of glow at night and they have this this rock formation. It's, it's just a beautiful space. And I was like, what else could they do with it? I'm thinking Great Lakes. I'm thinking like acoustic guitar person out there, like sailing by all you know, the US and Canada and checking things out and just enjoying it. But I mean, we'll see. This is the first season, obviously, they're doing it. The ship's only been sailing since the middle of January. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what this is. That whole back area is kind of this multi-purpose space where they can where there's so many opportunities to do so many different things and you know they're going to use it to the best of its ability once they kind of you know really uh test this product out and, and expand on it and you know of course as we as they travel they're getting feedback and they'll adjust and did you see what heidi wrote here heidi wrote said no it's hot to cold isn't it don and then john says i think it might be cold than hot that's what I thought. I'm pretty sure when you do it on the, the ocean controversy ship, continuing. This is a serious controversy we have here. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure on the ocean ships when you go to the Nordic spa, the traditional Nordic thing is they tell you to go into the sauna first, then go into the plunge pool. I think, so have you done that on ocean ships? I think, that hot cold. I think it's hot then cold. I thought it was hot then cold, yeah. You know, Isn't that what I said or what did I say? It's like shock in your body, you know. Like, wow. So. Did I not say hot to cold? Heidi says no, hot to cold, isn't it? Sure. John says no, it might be cold and hot. Oh. And then he, oh, we got more. 
We're just making a false. We're just making false fights here. What is this? A reality TV show? We're just let's, making let's, up like arguments. Let's do the face. Ready for the face? Ready. Uh. Anyway, so maybe I'm wrong. It, maybe this. Maybe it's not the cold. Then I was wrong. But it's definitely lined up from starboard to port. Cold then. Cold then hot. I'm pretty sure. So. Oh uh, well, too much fun. Uh, I know we're a little bit over an hour. We appreciate folks joining us. I'm, I, you know, want to make sure that we get to everyone's questions. Now we're just getting silly. I think I'm trying to say I don't see any more questions there. Let's see. We talked about all the public spaces. We talked about the dining. Touched on the rooms. We mentioned a little bit of entertainment. We talked about the high. And in the special operation boats, the submarines. Uh, am I missing anything? No, I, I think we've covered many of it. Some excursions. Um, I guess without a question for you, what is what is your two things that you love the most about this type of expedition cruise with uh, born this ship? If you had two uh, things, two things. Yes. Um, I think so. The two things I like is that you're able to go to different places, like and just kind of get there and do stuff. Right? It's not on the bigger ships like it takes a little bit longer to do stuff and you wait in line to scan out and there's really none of that with these ships it's like one day in virgin gorda the next day you're in you know you're in st lucia then you're in st kitts and i know those islands are pretty close together but it's kind of like you get to a new spot you, you drop anchor you get on a boat you're there and you just can get off and do stuff and a lot of it's included so that's the one of the best parts for me was doing that and i think the second best part is is that that service probably Right, people come back. They know your name. They know who you are. You go right up. They, you want your ice, ice caramel latte and double espresso. And they even, they even feel bad for you to stand at the bar. They like, don't go sit down. Like, well, we're just gonna yeah, watch. go sit down. We'll bring it to you. Where, where are like, you? Where are you, Mr. John? Where are you? Sit there. They sit. sit and they're like, okay, they're they don't want you to stand. Sit like, down. It's like I can stand for a minute. You're gonna. There's no one here. I'll stand. I don't mind. But yeah, I think that just that that makes you just feel better because you do have some long days, and. It, you, you need to go through you know, certain steps and things like that. The other thing I would say, Viking is still one of the cruise lines that has a little bit more safety protocols in place than, say, other cruise lines, and we appreciate that, right? They're making sure everyone's safe and healthy. They're abiding by their own level of protocols, which includes they still have some daily testing on board, and they, they require masks only until your tests come back. So there, there's a little, So there is some of that, and I think, Everyone on board appreciates that, knowing you're in, you're truly in a bubble on a Viking ship. Other people used to say a bubble, right? You're truly in a bubble there, and especially when you're in Antarctica and you're like the only people together for two weeks. Like you can rest assured that they're on top of making sure everyone's going to be safe. And another breaking news here: Colleen says, Colleen McDaniel says it's hot, then hotter when she does it, and she is, you know, she's the authority here. We'll default to her. Women are always right. So yes. Colleen, Colleen, Colleen right. says it that it's hot to hotter. We're done. We're done here. Done. But to touch on what you said, I don't know if we've actually talked about. It. Should we back to when we first got on the ship? We of course we had to get tested when we uh, arrived in Barbados, right? So before I before I flew to from Miami to Barbados, I had to get a test that morning, right? Right. So many hours between, depending on when you're coming from. Then when we got on board, we had to get an antigen test. So we had the nasal swab antigen test then once we were cleared in the restaurant by the doctor we were sent to our cabin and we did a pcr test with the sputum and to place that outside our door we had to wear a mask until we were cleared uh that we passed that test but we were free to roam the ship and explore and then uh it was actually on the app or the tv would tell you if you had passed the test um and then every day we had to have that pcr test turned out by about eight in the morning or so you put it out by your door. Um, and so that was every day. And, you know, with the Viking group, my Viking group and everything like that, so many people talk about this PCR test. And a lot of people wish the testing would go away. And it's very controversial. And people, you know, they've added masks again on the river cruising because there's a little bit of a flare up in Europe going on, just like Singapore's having some issues. But I personally feel that I like that the daily testing was going on. I think it's a it's a basically a security blanket that if something were to start where I get it and then Don would get it. I think ignorance is bliss in a lot of ways, but I don't think it's very blissful if you have a, a outbreak on a cruise ship, which could potentially shut down the industry again. So I'm very uh, 
appreciative that Viking actually spent the money to have PCR labs on their ships. They're the first ones to do that. They're also the first ones to shut down voluntarily. And they've been very proactive and still are where they're doing things that, that other lines aren't doing. I think it's to protect their, their guests. Uh, it, it might be an inconvenience and a lot of people are hesitant to travel, but I think it's a great, I think information is powerful. And if you have one or two couples on a river vessel or an ocean vessel or an expedition vessel that have to be quarantined because they have some type of, uh, they're showing positive. I think it's a great to be proactive rather than just to be, just to turn a blind eye and have a, have a bigger incident um, where the vessel could be out of service for weeks and months or we have to, you know, or worse. So, and, and so uh, I'm very appreciative, but I think it's great. I think it's a good uh, peace of mind for travel today. And uh, I don't mind that they're taking the extra steps. Uh, and I yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I, I mean, I agree with you. I don't think I, I do agree with you that it's a balancing act. So let's, 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 let's all be honest, right? Viking caters a little bit older clientele. You're on ships longer. Their itineraries tend to be longer than your traditional you seven-day Caribbean. Are you calling me old? Uh, are you calling me old? No, you're young. You're young for the demographic. <laughs> Listen, I love Viking. I would do Viking all day long if I could get the vacation time off from the full-time job. And I know I married a rich older lady, but um, because they are kind of expensive. But I think if you're, yeah, if you're in close quarters, because their ships are small, especially river ships, what do they hold? Like 180? People, 190, 180? 190 max, yeah. Yeah, 190 max. And you're next to those people for two weeks. And every day you're going somewhere new. So you're you're interacting with those commu local communities. I think they're doing a responsible thing. And you need to be flexible now. We're still not out of this. And people want to pretend like the last two years, I don't know, were just a bad dream. So having masks when, where appropriate or where the local governments or that country or destination requires it and even if they don't i think on our trip right they said they asked us to wear the masks ashore just to be safe a lot of our tours were outside we when we were ever in transit we definitely wore uh, wore our masks uh the safari bus was an open air bus we didn't you know the tour we were on with you that kind of went to all those places but you're outside so much right you as you mentioned you're not stuck in some large bus for hours doing stuff but if they ask me to wear a mask, I'm, I'm going to wear a mask and I'll take the test. And yeah. I know Vikings looking out for us and also where you go. They, you know, they respect all those places they go because they, they're they there a lot. They have in the Europe, you know better than me, right? All those docking spots, they have 80 plug with them. Well, across the country, across the world, not just Europe, but between all the destinations, they have 80 river ships. So these ships are sailing these places at multiple times a week. And you want to build that respect for those people for those folks in case something is does pop up you're not bringing it somewhere yeah it would just take one we all know they would just take one outbreak from any major vessel where yeah and you know uh viking and you could turn a blind eye and just not know anything you you know well we don't know anything about that you know and everybody gets off after seven days on a traditional cruise but vikings being proactive and i'm all for it i mean if you uh, i think people want to feel safe they want to feel that people are being proactive we might not like that that's happening. No one likes that there's a flare-up in Europe right now. No one likes that there was a flare-up in Barbados before we arrived. So that's why they were really strict. And they were just now backing off some of those things. So we're going to places and we're doing things that other people, uh, you know, were places that are being, these local places have been affected. Um, so it's just, a, yeah, it's still a little challenging, but I think it's it's what we have to do for right now. And hopefully this will be a go away and, you um, and we can do things without it in the future. But right now, it's, it's better to be safe than sorry, I think. I agree. I think and that's a good way. So I don't I don't see any more questions. I think folks for joining us. Uh, but I think that's a good way to put it. If you take a Viking, whether it's river expeditions or ocean, you can rest assured that Viking is going, they're monitoring the situations and you need to be flexible if they input, you know, safety protocols that you weren't expecting. Definitely expect the testing. They're, they're going to test all summer, right? I mean, I can't imagine they're going to pull that. I think it's going to be for a long time until this, you know, until they have, uh, until things change drastically. And I don't know when that'll be. Maybe there'll be some over the counter, you know, some kind of medication which will stomp it out. Uh, but it's, you know, it's still lethal to some people. Um, it's still very contagious. Uh, it's nice that some of the uh, symptoms are getting lesser. I mean, I hear it. I hear it all the time. Oh, so and so had the sniffles. 
but it only takes that one person on that one cruise ship that'll make the headlines that could just ruin the industry. So um, if they need to be proactive to protect their businesses and protect their passengers in the short term, then great. Um, no, yeah, no, I, I agree. And I, I, the safest I feel we've been on, that was our 13th trip, I think, since the restart. And these protocols have come and gone, but that would be our second Viking trip since. So we went on Viking Ocean, now Viking Expeditions, and they've been the most consistent with their protocols. And I, I've always felt safe. And I always think that they're, they're also very transparent, right? They're, they're, they tell things. We, we had a little incident in our Iceland trip. They let us know what's going on. They try to keep guests informed and keep us safe. So I, I know, I, so I appreciate your time. I respect your time. Let folks know if they don't already know, obviously it's cruise addicts, but uh, you have a Viking group on Facebook. Folks check out, right? And you're also putting together a group cruise for the river cruises, right? Yeah, we have a special uh, Grand European 50-night uh, Basel to Amsterdam, I believe it is. It's a special group cruise just for Viking cruise members. So if you go to um, Facebook and you want to join the Viking Cruises, just search Viking Cruises. It's a Facebook group. You'll see my smiling face. Uh, it's also uh, we're working with Michael Consoli as well. Uh, he's our travel agent uh, for our group. And so please join the group where I've got 31,000 members this week, and we'd love to have you as well. And please join us at cruiseaddicts.com and all our social media channels are at cruiseaddicts, one word. Uh, such a pleasure to be here with Don. Uh, we had such a great time on this journey and uh, uh, him and his wife, Heidi, are just really, really wonderful to be with. And so we had a great time. It was great to see Colleen and John. Uh, so nice that they joined us here. They're just wonderful people. And I was able to have dinner with them as well. Just really, really great people. Hopefully you enjoyed some of the information uh, Don and I brought with you today. Hopefully we can do this again. Uh, I know we both want to do more live streams, uh, but thank you, Don. And um, can't say enough good things about you. Oh, I'm going to blush now, John. Thank you. I, I it is called, what is, what is, is, is your group called Viking Cruises? Or what's I, I forgot the name of the yes, group I'm in it. Um, it's called Viking Cruises. Viking Cruises. So don't forget to search Viking Cruise on Facebook for John's group. Check out the special Viking River Cruise that they have. And that's September of next year, right? Yeah, September 2023, 59th Grand European. Got a great special rate. Uh, our goal actually is we want to we want to book because we actually have an exclusive. We want to book fill up the entire Viking Longship just for our group. So that's our goal. We're trying to do it. It's still early, uh, so we're trying to get more bookings. We're trying to fill up the whole ship. We have an exclusive. We we actually it's almost like a full charter, so we can actually book this whole Viking Longship just for our group members. So if you're watching this, please get along. It's starting only five thousand dollars per person, includes air, everything. Of course, Viking uh, exclusive uh, and uh, the service. Um, why do two Viking cruises when you can actually do the Danube and the Rhine Grand European? All, it's, it's the best of everything in one uh, Viking river cruise at a great rate, only five thousand dollars starting. So yeah. including air, does it get any better than that? That's that's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, that's a great deal considering everything that Viking includes. And I think we were actually supposed to do. I'm pretty sure that's the itinerary we were actually going to do uh, yeah. July 2020. Well, of course we. You know, yeah, I've done the Danube, I've done the Rhine, and now this kind of does both, and it does some other amazing places. You get to see all of Europe at a great low rate, includes air, includes, I mean, beer and wines included, all the tours are included, you have optional ones as well, uh, why not do it? Uh, you get to cruise with me, you get to cruise with Michael Consoli, hopefully Don will come, we'll get, we need to get John and uh, Colleen to come too, it'll be the best of the best of the best. I, I got to, I, I will admit, I don't know what my calendar is next year, I just survived this year, like, yeah, it's been really crazy. We're really fortunate and uh, you know happy uh, to, to be doing this. And obviously, you you know this too. It, travels really come back, and yeah. we're here to promote cruising. It's our, we love cruising. It's the first vacation Hi and I ever took together, and we obviously are building this brand because of our passion for cruising. And we're just we're just this year alone is pretty crazy. So I don't have technically anything booked next year. So we'll we'll have to I'll talk Heidi more. She's she's not I don't know if she's as big as a river ships I am. I love the idea of you get you're there, you just walk literally walk right off the ship. Uh, the I guess yeah the river ships right. You walk right off. If you haven't done a well, you you kind of got a taste of it, but it's really like a boutique hotel, and you get to, it brings you to the city centers of all these amazing cities uh, of Europe. You don't need to. Uh, you know, a lot of times people that do European tours have to spend a lot of time on trains, planes, automobiles, buses, going from different cities, different hotels. Here you unpack once 
and you get to explore all of Europe, many different rivers and waterways uh, in, in the comfort that only Viking can give you, really. Uh, I love, we love river cruising. It's just the coolest, coolest thing. I highly recommend this course in September, but one of my favorites is the Viking Christmas, or not the Viking, but the Christmas market cruising. It's a mm. small season from November to December. The best. Get some glue vine. You're out, you know, the, 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 it, reach, it does the same sites that these, the popular tours, be the Danube or the Rhine, um, but it's because it's an off season cruise in the winter time, there's no crowds. So you get to see all these amazing sites. You get to experience local culture, the local Christmas markets, which is kind of like a fair. Uh, and they're usually in the shadows of the cathedrals. And you get it all to yourself because the crowds that are there in the high season of the summer are not there in the low season of the Christmas market time. So it's the best. I think the best. Um, and I know like in September when we're going, I guess is another great time because it's still warm um, for the Grand European Tour. So um all these things come into play as far as you know you have to plan you don't want to you don't want to go in a high season and and have to fight crowds you want the you want to go at the perfect time and uh so we could so highly recommend that no I, no i do we i mean we do definitely want to do all, all of those there's never a lack of things we want to do places we want to go i I'll, i mean i'll paraphrase like there's a classic like basically saying that you know the more you travel the more you realize you haven't seen you haven't seen nearly as much, right? The more people you talk to who travel, the more places you learn you want to go. So yeah. we'll, we'll take a look at it. We'll see. I know. But yeah, so check out John's group on Facebook, Cruise Addicts all over social. If you're watching this still and, and you want to follow, <laughs> it's at Eat Sleep Cruise, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, even doing some TikTok. I'm working on my dance moves. So <laughs> not really. And remember, this is going to be recorded. So we're going to have it. I'm going to put it on the Facebook channel or my, the Cruise Addicts channels. Um, and everything like that. So you can watch it on all our different social media things. Leave some comments below. We'll both monitor both of them and we'll try to answer any questions that come up. With. But I can I can speak for Don. Thank you all for watching and thank you all for the wonderful comments. We've got some of the best viewers here. Some we got some celebrities in that that comments there. They awesome. just speak into the theater. It's like they just walk yeah, in, like, drop like, a couple of comments and they just walk right out. So yeah. I mean, even Heidi showed up. I thought I thought you were talking about. Who I don't know who else you would be referencing. <laughs> I mean, Heidi showed up. <laughs> well, I, I I had to say something wrong just to make sure she clarified that I was wrong. So anyone else watching this, as John mentioned, you're watching on Facebook or replay on YouTube. And Did you she offer you water? Huh? Did she offer you any water? <laughs> any water? I had some water. Water. <laughs> any water? Uh, thanks again, John. I really appreciate it. I love talking, cruising, and talk all night. And as John mentioned, yeah, we'll definitely monitor comments. If you have any questions, oh, just tag us on social, right? Just hit at Cruise Addicts or at Eat Sleep uh, Cruise if you have questions about Viking. And uh, we'll have to do this again sometime. All right. Thanks, Don. Hi, John. Thanks.